y'all, it's Kathy, and today I want to share a hot chocolate recipe with you that I'm declaring Galveston ready. This isn't a Galveston recipe. Um, I looked at a different keto hot chocolate recipe and then tweaked it some to get it to match the Galveston macros a little more. It's not entirely on point, but it's close enough for a uh, Christmas splurge. So the weather has been getting cold around here in Tennessee. There was nice frost in the grass this morning. And I have to tell you, Lady and Ranger are so adorable in their coats. And I could just eat them up watching them run around outside in their little coats. They are so cute. But I do not like the cold. So I am really excited to have a warm treat to warm me up when they are done playing outside and I want to get in out of the cold. So let's get on with it and I will post the recipe below. You can tweak it a little bit to match your needs, but this is what I did. And I have to tell you, it is so delicious and thick and creamy and sweet and chocolatey. I think you're gonna love it. So, this is, these are the ingredients. The first thing, here's what's really important. Get your blender out and you add these things to the blender first. Add a can of coconut milk, add the heavy cream, and then your arrowroot powder. Arrowroot powder is optional, but it is a thickener and it'll help it give it that just real creamy, thicker, hot chocolate feel but you really need to add the arrowroot powder to the cold heavy cream and to the coconut milk and blend it up. Arrowroot powder does not do well in warm liquid. It clumps and it won't disperse evenly and it does not do its job if you add it in warm. You can warm it later once it's mixed in, but it will not mix in well warm. So add the coconut cream, and the cream and the arrowroot powder, zoo, zoo, blend it up. And then you can add the other ingredients. I added a half cup of monk fruit sweetener, which is a Galveston approved sweetener. And then I add three tablespoons of unsweetened cocoa, just the normal baking cocoa, unsweetened, you know, Hershey's, whatever. I used plain old Kroger brand. Um, then to up the protein in the hot chocolate, because we are trying to get it to match macros as closely as possible, I added one serving of bro uh, Vital Proteins collagen powder, which is something I add to my coffee in the morning too. And then here's a really interesting ingredient that you're going to want to add is a pinch of pink Himalayan salt, or I guess you could just do normal table salt. I always use pink Himalayan sea salt. Um, and it, I know that's counterintuitive to add salt to um, something sweet to your uh, hot chocolate, but if you're baking chocolate chip cookies, you'll notice that salt is one of the ingredients. So there's just something about it. And when I say a pinch, I mean a pinch. Don't even do like an eighth of a teaspoon, just a teeny, teeny bit. And then the last thing I added was vanilla. So put all those in your blender, blend it up for like two minutes. And, um, and then once it's all mixed together and the color is consistent, then you can pour it into your saucepan on the stove. Now make sure your stove is on low. You don't want it on high. Don't even crank it up on high to get the burner hot at first and then crank it down. Start it on low, just go low and slow, okay? And then pour your hot chocolate mixture in and continuously stir until it's the temperature you want. You're not cooking it, you're only warming it. So you, I guess, could do it in the microwave. I just don't think it would taste as good in the microwave. It wouldn't be as consistent. And so I stir, stir, stir the um, hot chocolate until I just barely saw a little tiny bit of steam coming out of it. And then I knew it was heated through, poured it into my mug and look at that. Oh, that's another thing. It's always more delicious in a Christmas mug. So if you have a favorite Christmas mug, mandatory that you drink it out of your favorite Christmas mug. It's chocolatey, it's thick, it's rich, it's delicious. Oh, this Christmas mug, I wanna give a shout out to one of my followers who is also in the Facebook group. 
it's such a small world. Um, she sent me a message and so I looked her up on Facebook and we have mutual friends from somewhere I used to live in Indiana. So, hey, Sarah, um, I got this mug at Meyer when I lived in Indiana. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with Meyer, it's a grocery store that is a little bit of a blend of a Kroger Target kind of thing. They have really super cute things like this, um, but the food is um, more along the lines of Kroger, um, not Publix really. It's kind of a Publixy Kroger Target Walmart blend, but I really liked Meyer, and they had they have really super cute uh, seasonal things, and so I got um, one of these for the whole family. So we all have matching Christmas mugs, um, and I intentionally didn't get one with anything specific Christmas other than a tree, so that it could actually last us all winter. <laughs> I don't put them away until after Valentine's Day, so that on a snowy day we can get them out and um, drink hot chocolate out of our uh, Christmas tree mug, but it's a snow mug if it's after Christmas. Anyway, um, I hope you enjoy the recipe. Now, I also want to give you another um, tip. If you're making large batches of hot chocolate for a party, we do it for Christmas Eve when my husband's family comes over. We do a hot chocolate bar with all kinds of things that you can add on top of the hot chocolate, um, different liqueurs and stuff like that. Liqueurs are not um, Galveston friendly, okay? So don't start adding that unless it's like on one of your celebration days where you're not counting macros. But, um, oh, but I did wanna say, if you'll notice the carb count in, I mean, not the carb count, the um, macros in this, the carb percentage is low enough that if you wanted to add a little dollop of whipped cream to this, and who wouldn't, um, it would not wreck your uh, carbs. It wouldn't wreck your macros, the percentages. Just make sure you add it when you're putting it in to your uh, macro calculator. So anyway, if you're making it for a large group of people like we do on um, Christmas Eve, it needs to stay warm, right? You can't just keep it on the stove and stay there stirring it all night. So last year I had to solve that problem. So I got um, three of these. They're the thermal like carafes that you can put any warm liquid in and it's supposed to keep it warm for hours and hours and hours. Like um, if you were gonna go outside and go look at Christmas lights or whatever and you, and you needed a reason to keep your hot chocolate warm, this is supposed to work for that. I found that these actually don't keep the liquid warm for very long. It keeps it Meh, warm, not like the toasty warm that you want it to be. Not scalding, you don't want it to be scalding, but anyway, so I had to figure out a way for the hot chocolate to stay warm for several hours during our party. So first I Googled it and I looked up and people said, well, make sure that you prepare the carafe and that it is warm on the inside already. So basically what that means is boiling some water and filling up the craft with hot water and letting the water sit in there for like five minutes so that the thermal stuffy stuff is, it warms through. And so the inside of your carafe is already warm and then you pour it out and then you pour the hot chocolate in. So that's one tip to keep it, if you have one of these and you're trying to keep your beverage warm longer, this is one, that's one tip on how to get it to stay warm longer. That was not good enough for me. So I came up with this little um, dressing, <laughs> this little sweater. All this is, I ordered from Amazon, was um, thermal leggings, like that you wear, like legging leggings, they're lined, they're thermal leggings, and then I got some of the little boot toppers that were in sweater material, so like I have Christmas colors, there's a red one, and there's other things, and, um, and this really helps, because you're basically putting a coat and sweater, or a sweatshirt and sweater on your carafe, and that really helps hold the heat in. And then um, 
I also like would add a cute little ribbon with a tag to let them know which one it was because we did have an adults only hot chocolate last year and we had like a peppermint hot chocolate last year and so you can label you know your hot chocolate flavor so people can choose which one they want um so anyway that's a tip on how to keep your hot chocolate warm comment below tell me what you think about the hot chocolate recipe and i will see y'all tomorrow bye